Well, movies make it look like you need to be an extremely skilled pilot to navigate the asteroid belt. But that's not actually true. The asteroid belt isn't some thick obstacle course of depth. It does have trillions of space rock that range in space from space dust to a quarter the size of the moon. About 100,000 of these asteroids are over one kilometer wide, but they are very spread out. This asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter is 225 km across. That's one and a half times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. And this spreads the space rock millions of kilometers apart. It's almost impossible for a spacecraft to collide with the one. Well, our atmosphere is our last line of defense. Unfortunately, some space rock would just be too big for the atmosphere to consume before the crash into the Earth. So, just like in the movies, if a giant asteroid were headed our way, we should probably nuke it right, or we should not. While nuking it could help take a planet killing asteroids down a couple of notches, it would not mean we would totally be safe. If you nuke an asteroid, it would break into many smaller pieces and any one or hundreds of those could still pose a major hazard to life on Earth. Hopefully talking about the terror of asteroids didn't scare you too much. But did you know you can't cry in space? Well, you can cry as much as you like, but your teardrops won't fall down your cheeks like they do here on Earth, thanks to the microgravity in space. If you stabbed your toy on the International Space Station and started to bawl your eyes out your tears, Space Station and started to bawl your eyes out, your tears would gather into watery blob that would float or stick to the front of your face. If you were thrown out of the airlock into the vastness of the space, you would not turn into a popsicle right away. That's because to freeze, there has to be a heat transfer from space to your body. But heat or cold doesn't travel very fast in the vacuum of space. Your body would freeze, but it would take hours to happen. And by then, you would be long dead from something else. You may have heard that the planet all have their own song. This one has roots going back thousands of years when ancient astronomers theorized about the music of the spheres. They thought that the movements of the planets might produce a form of music in itself. Well, that didn't exactly prove true, but the magnetic field of the planets do interact with charged particles and radio emissions. That result from the interaction can be turned into sound waves. Meteorites may look like they are on fire, as they blaze their way through our atmosphere. But again, that's not exactly the case. If you're lucky enough to catch a glimpse of a shooting star, what you are really seeing is the glow from the intense air pressure in front of the meteorite. As it speeds through our atmosphere, the rapid compression of air in front of the meteor heats things up until it's glowing bright. And as a result of all that heat, meteorites tend up to burn up in our atmosphere, even though they are not technically on fire. No, you would not explode in space either. You would inflate, though that's because nitrogen in your bloodstream would gather into bubbles and puff you up to double your size. But that's not what's going to kill you. It's the lack of oxygen after 15 seconds in space. Your brain wouldn't get enough oxygen through your blood and you would lose consciousness. After two minutes in your space, your other organs would start shut down one by one. And another misconception is there is not actually a dark side of the moon. At least not one. That's permanently dark. The reality is the moon is tightly locked to the Earth. That means the Moon takes the same amount of time to make one full spin on its axis as it does to revolve around the Earth. That means you 
only ever to get the sunlight hit one of the side, but every side of the moon gets lit every day. Let's bring you all the way back to home. Now from your vantage point out in space, this beautiful blue marble might have looked to be a perfect spare after all that what you have been told your whole life. But I bet you can guess what I'm going to say next. Well, that's another lie. Or this technically an obstacle and oblate spare ride. That means it's slightly flattened on the north and south poles, while it blocks out at the equator. How did it get its way? Well, just imagine when the planet was forming. It was a bit a ball of clay as the spin the top and bottom get a bit squished down while the middle looks more bloated. In space, no one can hear your scream. You might remember that as the tagline to the movie Alien, but it's not true to a point while you would never be able to hear a spaceship explodes like you do in the movies. There are some areas in space where there may be enough particles allow sound to travel and when we are speaking about sound well planets do not orbit around the sun all the things in our solar system are in balance and even though the sun is the most massive object in our planetary neighborhood other planets are participating in this gravitational tug of war instead of orbiting the sun Planets and moon orbit around at a central point between them and our sun. The point is called a barycenter. For Earth, this barycenter is so close to the sun's core that there is not much of the difference. But for Jupiter, this point is about 15,000 kilometers away from the center of the sun. So the gas giant in the sun are orbiting each other. That's enough space myths for today, but for such amazing videos, keep watching, just imagine.